So I've just joined a table. I don't know much about the players here. I know this guy from Venezuela. He's a bit of nuts. I've played him quite a few times. On the big blind is the first hand I'm actually playing. And I'm just going to take a blind. Lucky me. The next one I'm going to fold. And then we'll just see if we know anything about the other players. Like I said, I know about them. So he's got a pretty tight range, you can see there. Tears, King Queen off, King 10 suited. Queen 10 off is about as far as he goes. So that's fine. Let's just see here this aggressive player. I'm playing, playing aggressive. He's only playing on this table, so I'm just say I'm not sure yet. Let's just watch the action here so you can get a showdown. That's a pretty big bet. So he's got to have a straight. Whoa, do we have two straights? Split pot, five, or is it six, seven, eight, nine, ten? It's got to be a straight. No, that was weird. Okay, so I'll just make a note here of the eight nine suited. Nine eight suited. So he was going for the so I have to raise that because it'd be a waste of time. That guy's gone altogether. Don't know anything about this guy. I suspect he's gone with an 80 cent minimum entry, which would show a bit of an experience. So I'm going to push him. So I've got the overcards. That's interesting. Okay, I don't know anything about him. I'm just trying to put him off. Okay, I can't shake him. And he's got a nice and a four. So it's a bummer. Knight, Ace, Four, Offsuit, Couldn't Shake Off, Couldn't Shake Off, Low, Peer, Top Tigger. It'll be useful to know later. It's the first time I've faced them. Okay, fidelity. Only player only playing this table. And he bets when he plays. This guy's just joined. Only playing on this table. What's happening here? This is interesting. And it says he's from Russia, but that looks like German Karma Picker or Karma, Karma Poker, maybe it's Poker. I thought it was like German for Room Selector. Is he playing with Monte? Well, yeah, he's playing. A sit and go as well as. Two cash tables. So we'll just make that he's a grinder for now. Another new player over there, and what's what we've got on this guy? Ace plays that ace four off. Okay. Got another grinder over here who's pretty nitty. Very nitty. The stat here is how often he calls a pre pre flop bet. Two bit and um, it's never handy to know. This guy does it a lot, so I need to play tighter against him. And what have we got there? Thirty-three seventeen. That's a a loose regular, pretty much. But we'll wait until we've got a few more hands before we make that call. It's looking like a tight rig over there as well. Yeah, I'll fold. Let's have a check that one. 
Okay, is that replying here? Not sure yet. Okay, so we've got a couple of bits of hint information on this guy. So I can I think we can put them down as a rig. But it's a loose. Okay, a little bit smaller. This is a fairly aggressive rig, loose rig. So you can say he's usually aggressive. You can see that only half the time does he fold to a pre flop raise and he pulls 38% of pre flop bets. Maybe it's in 10. Maybe it's in this range. Okay, there's only fine here. Okay, so it checks pretty much everyone. And there's a grinder, so you can just oops, fold. You can put them down as a grinder. Don't like that. So I've been playing pretty pl passively. On one hand out of ten. Mm, okay, so let's see this hand I probably should be in. So we've got someone who hasn't followed to any rows. I'm just going to go min raise to get. This guy should fold. That guy should fold. Well, except that he went in. So 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got an open near this straight. On a rainbow textured board, yeah, we'll call that. That's a easy decision. That doesn't help me. If he does a min bet again, I'll call it again. We've got eight outs. Doesn't give me great odds, but. 11 to 1, you can't, can't knock that. I'm still getting equity here, and that's just blowing it for me. 7, 8, 9, 10, nothing. That's kind of interesting. It makes me think that he's a little bit worried. So I'm going to go for a pop bet and see if I can. Bluff them off. Yes, look at that. I'll fold the next one. So I'm happy with that hand. We just showed that bit of weakness and we pounced on them. And that's just that. Aggression, I had absolutely nothing. Uh, it just shows that you don't actually have to have a good card. In fact, I'm going to tag that as a good hand in my Poker Tracker 4. So that I can replay that. And I know I did the right thing, but it's just kind of interesting. To look back on good hands if you're reviewing, not just bad hands. And hands that you could have done better on. One of the goals in poker, of course, is to get your opponent, the villain, 
to make a mistake, which is exactly what happened there, because I'm sure he had me beat. He probably had a pair that wasn't the nuts and thought I had the nuts. So, this person from Argentina, playing very tight, pretty cold, yeah. Nitty, he's put money into three out of seven hands. So, I'm going to make a note here that he's a grinder. Nit. Again, I'm going to change this color to indigo. Knit. I'm going to do the same here. Make him indigo. Knit. And we have someone that maybe wants to be anonymous up there. He's a rig and he had ace king. I'm going to call that. I just want to make a note where the ace king. Loose rig. I've played him before. Um, no, we've got ice king off. Now I've got a nice flush draw here, and this guy. Okay, so half a pot calls. I've got a nine. He can't have the ace because he would have bet it already, I would think. So I'm going to see if I can suck a bit more out of him. You might have King Queen or something else. Thank you. I'll take it. Fold that one. So let's observe. Okay, so this guy's starting to look a bit like a rig. And he's put on three blinds. We're going to steal. Nice that set there, attempt to steal 100. So 1 out of 1, but this could make it 2 out of 2. Ooh, now, so there's a semi bluff. He's probably got a good draw. This guy thinks he's got something as well. So that could make it interesting. I would expect someone to have the king. The question is the way they're playing. Probably likely to be him because he's under the gun and he's, um, he's sorry, small blind. So he's out of position to be playing a hand like that. Okay, I don't really like Queen 10, but when it's suited. I'll definitely be playing against this guy because he doesn't. There we go. That guy's not easy. It depends if this guy gets a bit No. Alright, so we'll just take the blind probably. Yep. Eight, nine off. That's pretty marginal range. And given this person is likely to play, this person is likely to fold. Just no. Yeah, that's what I expect. This is seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got an open ended straight. It's a possible flush draw. It's a possible, there we go. Seems to be a little bit of a sign of weakness there. He's out of position. Thank you very much. Okay, that one I don't like so much. So I'll be content to watch the other players. Whoops. Paper Track has found out here for me. Called three bits out of position of Ace Queen off. That's pretty normal. And I'll just make a note of that. Ice cream off. And how many hands have I got on? 24, 14. That's a pretty much 
a tight regular plier. So we'll uh, open the rig, we'll go here and go tight rig. Okay, so what have I got here? I think I'll just pull this because I'm in late position, that's worth a look. Okay, maybe worth a look, but it's not worth a lot. And, hmm, okay, we'll have another free look. That's interesting, it makes it unlikely that anyone else has got an ace. I could have the nuts there with the king high. See what Scott does. Hmm, okay. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Ten jack off. Not a great hand. Not like it's suited, but I'm going to call it because it is the best hand for a straight draw. Other than suited, of course. Okay, so this guy. Flying as a rig, he's in late position, he's gone for a min raise, we've got a fold, we've got a call, so two cents to six to one odds. No help to me at all. And I'm gonna check that as well. Because my straight draw is now pretty much gone. He thought he had something to start with. I believe him now. Especially being a re okay, I don't like that at all. I'll just change that to orange and use a standard rig, so I'm just gonna put it down with a rig. But it'll tell me that in the future. And what have I got for you as notes? Okay, so I've got a few hands, have I got those there? No, I haven't. That's quite interesting. So, previous hands that he's got to show down with Ace 4 off, Ace King off, Ace Queen off. So, Ace King off, Ace Queen off, Ace 4 off. Which pretty much tells me he'll play any ace. Which is interesting because his stats suggest that he's on the Tightish side. No, the problem was a loose rig, so I must have one but I've a loose rig previously. Okay, just like that A6 there. No. A6. I can't remember whether it was suited or not. So I won't bother. Okay, so what's going on? We've got this guy who looks like a calling station. Loose case of fish. I'm label them as that for now. I can always change it later if I want to put more information. But that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. So he's trying to put a rig off a hand. He could well have ace king or ace queen. And then we have the ace to start with. And the rig thinks he's got the better hand. So he's going to have to go all on the ace queen. That's what I thought. So that was a good guess. So 
ice cream suited for a flush. Oh no, it was too keen. And this guy has decided that's too much action for him. Hmm. No. Out of my range for a big blind against a nut. Even though he falls to pre flop range of 100%, and that's kind of interesting, isn't it? But, okay, you know, this one has proved the point for me. Two players. So there's my ace. Check, check. Pretty much a regular player here. Also checking. I still think he's got something. He's not very confident anymore. And there's my ace too, but someone, no. If someone was going for a flush, you'd think they'd already gone for it. <coughs> so I was probably looking a good deal. That's a regular flyer. I think I've got them already. What can I do with that? He wants to scare someone off, but he can't. And he hasn't got anything he's mucked. Oh, he hasn't mucked. Bring Jack. No. Bring Jack. Off. I'm going to fold that next hand. And we're going to just note that he is a regular player. And we'll do. Let's tidy that up. And also make here a regular player. And we have Queen Jack off. Right. The same here. <coughs> okay, so this guy must have high pockets. Ice King. That's my guess. He's trying to steal that hand. He doesn't really want to call her if he's going all in on the pre flop. So he's put the squeeze on Fidelity. And let's see what we've got here. Pockets here, I thought so. I called that correctly. And he had Ace King, I called that correctly. Nice. Now it's my turn. So pocket kings. So the the thing is, you don't want to. You want callers. <coughs> and you don't want to give someone a draw. Okay, so he's been pretty quiet for a while. I'm going to raise him. One on one would be good. He's pretty tight. Okay, so we have a new player here who is only playing on this table. He's called me. We've got three callers, and this is looking pretty good unless someone's got a big fat here. Okay, so unless he's got aces, I think I'm still looking pretty good here. So I'm putting the pressure on him and I've probably got pocket aces. I'm going to have to risk it. No. He doesn't. That's interesting. I could have sworn he would have that. And all he had was sixes. Wow. Well, that's kind of nice. That was a great pot. $2.28. And suddenly I've doubled up. Doesn't mean I'm going to play any different, but it's um, 
something worth waiting for. I wonder what he does for a living. Is he a radio announcer? Maybe he's a poker commentator. <laughs> okay, so we've got Kojo playing against the Nut who folds. I'm not going to play that hand. Um, you know, it's late position. So this guy is a regular. He's pretty much a standard rig. But he doesn't like to let go of cards, which is useful making a note of that. Just so there, that is the rig. Like the King King, which beat the Ace King. Obviously, it's in the range anyway, but just the thing that I'm looking for there is the how far down. He goes with pockets, especially given we don't get that information until we get to the showdown. So he's got queens, king jack, knight, king jack off, and over here we have queens, knight, and fold. So we've got king king, we've got queen queen. He's having a, quite a nice run, except for the fact that he's not sitting on a lot of cash. He has won 14% of the hands, which is pretty good. This rig over here is won 20% of hands, or a little bit. No, hang on, I can't tell that. I'll just move this for a second. No, he's won 9% of the hands. Move him back. So, let's go. 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 Green off and ice for suited. So here's the guy that we saw likes anything that's got nice. And then he's won 20% of his hands, which is pretty good. We've got my stats, pretty much regular. As well, 26 16 draw I could probably play a few less hands and pression. Yeah, reasonably happy with that. So, here we are in the big blind. I'm happy that this person is a nook. Raise this for value. Um, he's still around with this kind of call because I took him. Nine, nine. Oops. Okay. Sold. I'll go over here. Nine, nine. Come on. Six, six. And he's a nook. Save that. Now we've got both of those hands there. No, no, six, six, nine, nine. And we've got another four bees in there. Okay. 
So the information I have on these notes comes back to me on uh, poker stars, but only I think within a month. The poker track of four information I've got on them, I've got on them forever. So that's why I'm recording it in both places because it's possible that at some stage I could find myself playing without a HUD. I'm going to fold here. Mostly to this guy because. Oh, there we go, that's interesting. No, good timing for my fold because although I haven't opened in this straight, this guy obviously has a good pair. I can't imagine they've both got good pairs, but we obviously ticked um, for any hand. This guy's a bit worried now. Or not? Mm, interesting. <coughs> And with his stats, he had to have had a good hand. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. I'm going to call that because I'm in late position. It's a good hand for a flush draw, not particularly good for much else. I don't have a flush draw, but I get a free look. Now I've got a pair of sevens, but there's a good looking potential flush draw for someone else and I'm out of here. Cost me two cents to find out. It's okay. Gonna fold that one. Let's see if this guy's playing any more than one table. No. Not sure yet. The stats there from the previous players, so that tells me nothing. Look at this guy, he's going nuts. He's um, been playing tight for so long. He's won a hand and now he's getting aggressive. And if he's thinking that he needed to change his playing style. <coughs> or maybe he just had two good hands in a row. So the exercise here is looking at when I should play a wider range and when I should play a tighter range. Well, pretty obvious in that one. I really want a caller. And I don't want to scare anyone off at this stage. But, uh, so yeah, if I went higher I'd probably have no callers. I may have no callers anyway. Okay, I'll accept the free hand. I couldn't have just called it really because I'd probably um, end up with someone having a better hand. A bit like the people that you see with ace ace and they lose to someone who gets a set of sixes. It's not worth it. Okay, I'm only going to play for about another 10 minutes. I'm out of the sand. So, the strategy that I'm playing to, I got from Day four of how to study poker, uh, book two from Sky Matsuhashi, and um, you can find them at smartpokerstudy.com. I'm tracking all my information on Poker Tracker four. Which despite the um, $4.51 you can see at the moment, I'm actually only a dollar six up because uh, I lost a couple of decent sized stacks earlier on before I started recording. I had some 
trouble with my APR soft software, which I don't know whether it's a memory issue, but for some reason I don't seem to um, be able to run easily with the software that I bought. And the free software is working well, so it's kind of interesting. I haven't reported it, so I guess I need to do that because I did pay for that software. Now, the only thing here is that if I finish the game soon, I leave the game soon, I'm actually in a situation where I can potentially intimidate players. Got a 20% win rate. And um, you would assume that with my table position, now this is looking interesting. So I'm going to bet, and I'll show you why. Because this guy folds to every pre-flop. Pre this one, unfortunately, I don't know anything about. And I put the zero. This guy only calls 5% of pre-flop raises. So, good chance of stealing the blinds there. Yep. So, that was a correct play, and you'll see I've been successful there, or at least I've attempted to steal blinds 80% of the time, 4 out of 5 opportunities, and I've been successful with them. So I'm now in middle position. I have to call this guy. He might be worrying that given that I beat him big time before. But I have to be careful because he may be after revenge. Okay, so I've got an ace. He may have an ace as well. I'm going to call him. If he has an ace king, I'm probably looking in trouble. But he thinks I might have one, so I'm going to attack his show of weakness. And I'll take some more money off him. Thank you very much. That was kind of nice of him. So he showed a bit of aggression. I think he had an ace. Um, but he's just a little bit too timid. It'd be interesting to actually look him up on uh, take a tracker or somewhere and see um, how well he plays. So he's done a three bit. So three big blind bet, two bet, from under the gun, and he's nitty. It almost seems like people on this table are getting a handle on the style of other players. Two players currently sitting out. Are they both Russian? Babuski, yep, both Russian. I makes you wonder sometimes if they, if they know each other. That guy's sitting out now. Sometimes when you're a little bit successful at the low stakes, so probably at any stake, I guess, people start looking for easier tables. So this guy, I think I had him as a grinder. He could just be sitting out to his, yeah, look at that. He's playing a lot of hands, so he could have just timed out there. Um, I've said he's a grinder. No, dude. No easy kickings here. No, I didn't actually say on there. But he's basically a nutty grinder. Grinder. Now our nut down here is getting very aggressive and it's working for him. Hmm, not something I really want in a small blind position, depending on who calls. So if this guy bets again because he's in position, yeah, I'm going to let him have it. I just don't think it's worth it. No, I'm doing Quite nicely, thank you very much. So, am I going to get 
Hey, V out of this. So five cents, so uh, why not? So three players. I could have top tier here, and I'm in position. No, that's interesting. Why would he do that? Okay, thanks. He's got other cards. Maybe he has. Let's see if I can scare him off. Yep. Okay, no, I'm not going to call that. So I was basically saying that he was a grinder nut, and so I'm going to change that now to nut because I know he's a grinder. But what's more important is that he's playing tight grinder nut. We know he had a 10-10. I'm going to fold that, I'll just reopen that, and change that to indigo for nut. So. So what I've possibly learned here is that clearly position and range is, is really important. Sometimes nits get carried away. In fact, look at this. This guy was, was shown as a nit. Now he's pretty much a, a tight rig. The stats have changed in just a small number of games. Um, so I'm going to have to have to bet that because he doesn't he folds to um, pre-flop bets. Does it really matter? Well, it matters mostly. So people are starting to disappear because of my play because that's easy money. That's not. It's a shame for these people that decided that they'd leave because they don't like the style of play. He's going back down again. I think I'm going to leave him as a nut. He is pretty tight. Um, because if they're leaving because of me and I'm leaving too, that's sort of. Under the gun, no, that's not under the gun. That's the discipline that I'm trying to play here is is that stuff that I've learned from the Poker Stars video. If you want to know the link to that, you'll have to buy the book. How to study poker book two by Sky Matsuhashi. I don't think it's fair that um you get all that information and he doesn't get some credit for it. Look at that, everyone's starting to disappear. No, I'm not going to call you there, dude. And we'll just go around a couple more times and then we'll, then we'll call it a, a day. Well, this is kind of interesting. I'm in position. Nah. Hmm, about 10 minutes I've, I've played for two hours and I've got a whole lot of other stuff I really need to do. So you should fold. And you can do anything. Okay. okay. Three bit. Seven, eight, ten, jack, queen. So, no. Not many of us left. Ooh, he's got a hand. So you can steal the blinds. He says his attempt to steal is far to 33%, and he's left. So only three of us left. So I don't know if there's much point, but sometimes it's cool to practice what's more or less heads up. Surely he's not gonna have eyes, no, I didn't think so. Okay. Neither of us have got anything, but I'm going to 
force them to it to stay in. So it is blind. Oh no, this is a tough one. So there's only two of us. I really want him to think he's got a hand and I'm going to risk. I don't normally do. But I want to try and get him to bet again and then I'll push back. There we go. And we'll just take it a little bit more often. Okay, and now I'm going to go for 34 cents. Really put some pressure on. And we'll take that off. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have the cents. What have I got here? Oh, that's a nice looking hand. 19 Jack Queen. I'm actually getting a royal. Oh, that's a shame. Show cards. Yeah, I'm in position. This guy hasn't played for a while. He could have something. Down to three of us. I think I'm wearing everyone out. <coughs> I wonder what his heads up plays like. I've got nothing. He's a regular player. He should sense weakness and beat out and I'll fold. Okay. Yeah, I thought he had something. So A6. No. A6 off. 7 9. That's my calling range for small blind. Of course, it's a bit different when there's only two players. No support for that. No, I'm not going to try and bluff him. He's sitting out, so he's going to leave. Now it's just two of us. And we'll fold, and I think we'll call it a day. There you go. That's it. She's all over. I've scared everyone off the table. I'm left there. And my day's sitting has earned me $2.49 per hundred hands. So that's a good lesson. Thank you, Sky, for some good information. And I think we'll close this off.